I hit the space bar, and my computer screams out the desperate tune of Waving Through a Window from Dear Evan Hansen. I take on the twitches and awkward smiles as I become Evan for the next three minutes. After the next chord and the following silence, I listen intently for my next roll. I pick up the first hints of I Dream the Dream from Les Mis and drop to the floor overwhelmed by the pain of being not but a wretched plaything of this world. <gasps> and then I'm Peter Pan flying to the next star to the right and off until morning. Then the phantom arrogantly abducting the young girl he loves. As I morph from one character to the next, each transformation takes a toll on my throat, but I sing on. A year ago, teachers and friends would have never guessed that I sang show tunes alone in my room at top volume. <laughs> <laughs> they would have described me as a student with an ardent passion for maths and sciences and coding. Last year, I would have never volunteered to read poetry in a, to a class of people or belt out a song as part of a school musical. I was the epitome of self-control and discipline, arriving at school early and staying late to find empty classrooms in which to work on some coding project or some fancy lattice boltman simulation or whatever else that I was on my mind. <laughs> I appeared to lack the passion or unfiltered emotion to just lose self-control and sing my heart out. Singing show tunes in my bedroom created a creative escape from my carefully coded life, but it was a private and entirely self-involved activity. The idea of giving a speech, much less stepping on stage to recite even one line, was anathema. Coding is definitely a way of expressing myself, but my impromptu singing sessions really showed me that another side of me needed to be heard and that I might benefit from losing some self-control. We all live in a world where deadlines and opportunities and distractions whiz past us, and we all need to be prepared to deal with them. In this way, we all, us young people, are like spiders, carefully crafting and spinning our webs. We are trying to catch and manage everything that flies by us, and as we build, we each amend and add to our web, figuring out through trial and error what works, what doesn't work, what gets caught in our net, what's too big and breaks our net. As we experiment with who we are, our webs become more elaborate. We find different patterns and um, symmetries and that we, we lose sight of our anchors, those pieces that connect our web and ground us to the world around us. We become caught up in spinning spirals and symmetries. We craft designs that are not connected to our anchors and we create unstable webs. This fall, I felt like a spider whose web was firmly anchored on one side, but the other was left flapping in the wind. So therefore, the fall of my senior year, when I was basically deciding to apply to specialized programs in computer engineering and physics, I decided to address that neglected side of my web by trying out for the school play. There were 10 parts for males and 10 males auditioning, so I got a part, luckily. <laughs> <laughs> but quickly, I was worried that I was the weak link in a chain of established theater talent. Like, I, I was always behind on memorizing lines, and one rehearsal, I missed the stage direction, and then I accidentally stripped over a metal ironing board that impaled me. And I, I was dismayed. But quickly, I learned to enjoy it. I, I had always enjoyed working alone, but I became addicted to the en energy of creating with others. Each scene felt like a real-time puzzle to be solved in every rehearsal. And then afterwards, I tried out for the Winter Musical and was cast in it. But by this point, I felt that I had nurtured and um, anchored that side of my web. Shady Side has encouraged all of us to take risks by exposing us to a little bit of everything and always supporting our talents. We are luckier than we probably realize to have had access to arts, academics, and athletics always available to us. We've had an incredible safety net of 
peers and teachers and family who have always supported us to take risks. And if we failed miserably, they were always there. As Merida from the Disney film Brave says, if you had a chance to change your fate, <laughs> would ya? <laughs> and, and I say yes. We are all young. Over our four years, we have found things that have anchored us here in high school. We have tried and tested things and found what works for us. But as any spider can tell you, we are going off to college and our webs will change. So what I want to leave you with today is explore and experiment with your passions. If you're a theater nerd, take a coding class. If you're a French major, try an astronomy course. Take up tennis, play ultimate frisbee, try painting. And so when your old anchors thin and erode over time, you will have new ones that can keep you stable as the big things come trying to fly through your web. I may or not may not continue with theater in college, but I'll do something outside my comfort zone and I'll never stop singing show tunes. Inevitably, as we grow up, our webs must change, but my class, class of 18, I always would urge you to remember your anchors and remember to secure them. Thank you. <laughs>